In A Link to the Past, the very first item that Link gets on his journey is the lamp, an item that the player can use to see in the dark, but also spark some fire that can be used to light torches. In this episode, we're going to get this item implemented and create torches for our game that Link can light up. If you've been following up to this point, you'll know that this is the first usable item that we're implementing for Link. We need to think ahead about how equipable items will work in this game. Essentially, the player can choose one item to equip, and when the player presses the action button, they'll use that item. With this in mind, I'm going to give a new property to Link called Item, which is going to hold some number that represents a certain item. For example, we can make it so the value 1 represents the lamp, 2 represents the bombs, 3 is the bow, and so on. Later on, we can check this value and use the corresponding item accordingly. So if player.item is set to 1, we're going to use the lamp, or create that small burst of fire in front of Link. We'll create a new type of object for this fire, and give it its own collision class. The first piece to this that we'll work on is the animation. Here I have the small sprite sheet for this fire burst, and I can simply run this through animate, like I did for Link's walk cycle, and draw it to the screen at the fire's position. And we'll see it burning away wherever it exists. Of course, this isn't how we want the fire to behave. When it gets through showing all three frames of the animation, we want the fire to disappear. So I'll create a new timer for the fire object and count it down in real time. When that timer expires, we'll destroy the physics object and remove the fire from the game. And although it's short, the fire now behaves appropriately. However, we want the fire to spawn in front of Link when he uses the lamp. Luckily, we can reuse some old code in order to do this. In an earlier video on querying the world, we created a system where we can find some point that lies in front of Link, so that we can check that area for colliders. I want to grab this code and put it into a new function. This function will check the player's direction and calculate an xy position that is some number of pixels in front of Link. Then it'll return the x and y coordinates for that point. We can use this function for querying the world in the same way that we had before, but we can also use it to determine where the fire object will be created. We can say we want the position that's 94 pixels in front of Link, and the function will do the rest for us. So now we can create little bursts of flame, but that isn't very useful when there's nothing to use it on. In A Link to the Past, you can light up unlit torches to solve puzzles and get items, and I think this would be a great object for us to start off with. The concept is pretty simple. Torches have two states, unlit and lit. When it's not lit, we will show a basic sprite, but when it's lit, we'll show the short lit torch animation. So we'll set up our torch as a static rectangle collider, and it'll have its own unique collision class. The state will be stored as either 0 or 1, 0 being unlit and 1 being lit. In the draw function, We'll check the torch's state and draw the simple unlit torch sprite for state 0, and then display the lit animation for state 1. Now all that's left is to program the interaction between the fire and the torch. We'll do this inside the fire object. While it's active, the fire will query the space around it, searching for torch colliders. Then if it finds any, it'll set that torch's state to 1, lighting it up. And that's it. We have our first equipable item completed. We now have the option to set up torches around our dungeons to create puzzles just like the original game. As always, the code for this project can be found on GitHub. You can find all the details in the description. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.